it's a pleasure to have you join me on this virtual journey. Welcome. Welcome to our video on Sarah Conlon. We're thrilled to have you here. Sarah Conlon Maguire, 20 January 1926, 19 July 2008, was an Irish housewife and a prominent campaigner in one of the most high-profile miscarriage of justice cases in British legal history. She spent decades clearing the names of her husband Giuseppe and son Jerry over the provisional Irish Republican Army IRA pub bombings at Guildford and Woolwich, and helped secure an apology from former British Prime Minister Tony Blair in 2005 for their wrongful imprisonment. In this section, we'll be exploring Guildford pub bombings. In 1974, an IRA unit planted bombs into pubs in Guildford, Surrey, killing four soldiers and one civilian, and injured 50 others. Gerard Conlon, Patrick Armstrong, Paul Hill and Carol Richardson, dubbed as the Guildford Four, were arrested, convicted, and jailed for life in 1975, with each serving 15 years in jail before their convictions were quashed by the Court of Appeal after an extensive inquiry carried out by Avon and Somerset Police into the original police investigation. The inquiry found that the way the confessions of the four were noted was seriously flawed, concluding that the notes taken were not written up immediately and that officers may have colluded in the wording of the statements. Giuseppe Conlon, Sarah's husband, was convicted in 1976 along with six members of the Maguire family dubbed as the Maguire Seven, of running an IRA bomb factory in North London, on the basis of what turned out to be faulty forensic evidence. Each was sentenced to up to 14 years in jail, served their sentences, and with the exception of Giuseppe Conan who died in 1980, released. The Maguire Seven's first appeal, in 1977, was turned down, but a later appeal, prompted by the release of the Guildford Four, found that test kits used to detect traces of explosives had been contaminated. In 1991, the Court of Appeal quashed their convictions after it was ruled the original evidence against them was unsafe. On 9 February 2005, then Prime Minister Tony Blair issued a public apology to the Maguire Seven and the Guildford Four for the miscarriages of justice they had suffered, saying that he was very sorry that they were subject to such an ordeal and such an injustice, and that they deserved to be completely and publicly exonerated. The 1993 film In the Name of the Father, while changing some of the details of the cases from real life, showed how the Maguire Seven and Guilford Four became victims of a police force desperate to obtain a conviction under any circumstances to appease and upset public and senior justice officials. The time has come to unravel the secrets behind role in the sentences and appeals and gain a deeper understanding. Sarah Conlon won huge admiration in Ireland for her quiet dignity and refusal to feel bitterness. During the years that her husband and son were in jail, she sent weekly parcels of cigarettes, sweets, and Irish newspaper clippings to them, and saved up her prison visits for the two weeks of her annual holiday. Her regular letters to them always ended the same way, pray for them ones who told lies against you, it's them who needs help as well as yourself. Father McKinley, a priest who noticed Sarah crying after the 1977 appeal was turned down, and others helped her begin a campaign to free her husband, son and other members of the Guildford Four and Maguire Seven. She took to lobbying dignitaries, church leaders and the media, in addition to writing to numerous Irish politicians, including the Social Democratic and Labour Party SDLP members of Parliament Joe Hendren and John Hume, to ask for their support. At one stage she travelled to London to meet Cardinal Basil Hume to ask for his assistance. Her campaigning led to the start of the aforementioned inquiry, announced in 1989 by the Home Secretary Douglas Hurd, into the Guildford bomb cases, which led to Jerry's release. News of her husband's death reached Sarah just after she received a message from Home Secretary Wee Whitelaw stating that her husband was about to be released on compassionate grounds. Twenty-five years after her husband's death, Sarah Conlon and her family decided to fight for a public apology for the miscarriage of justice on her family. Once again she led the campaign, 
lobbying church leaders and politicians, among them the Irish Taoiseach Bertie Ahern, who pledged his support, which culminated in Tony Blair's apology to the Conlon family. Ill, she was unable to make the trip to London to hear the apology, but her children spoke to her by telephone from the House of Commons. After securing the apology, she mentioned that she no longer had to worry about dying and what it means. SDLP leader and foil member of parliament Mark Durkin described Sarah as a true heroine of our age and shining example to us all, saying that she had the patience of a saint and huge reserves of faith, fortitude and remarkable forgiveness, and that her story is an inspiration of faith, hope and love. Prepare yourself for an eye-opening discussion on personal life in the upcoming portion of this video. Colin was described as a woman of immense Catholic faith who was protective of her son Jerry, and who held the family together with her hard work, wanting their life to be respectable, holy, and quiet. She spent years working at a scrapyard sorting old clothes, and later worked long hours for low pay in the kitchens of the Royal Victoria Hospital, serving food to patients and mopping the floors. Conlon's husband, Patrick Giuseppe, was a pacifist who evaded the draft during World War II. He once worked at Harland and Wolf painting the hulls of ships, where the lead in the paint damaged his lungs. His condition was worsened by the humidity and condensation in the house, and he subsequently developed tuberculosis and emphysema. Sarah Conan died of lung cancer in July 2008, aged 82. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on in popular culture. The film In the Name of the Father 1993, directed by Jim Sheridan and starring Daniel Day-Lewis, is based on the Conlon family's story. Actress Marie Jones portrayed Sarah Conlon. The film was adapted from Jerry Conlon's autobiography Proved Innocent, later published as In the Name of the Father. The 1990 made-for-television film Dear Sarah is based on the letters Giuseppe Conlon wrote to his wife while in prison. The film was produced by Rady Tylef's Iron, directed by Frank Kvitanovich and written by Tom McGurk. It featured Stella McCusker as Sarah Conlon. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and share it with someone who might benefit from it.